Boys Lines. And Boys Lines. As bold as lions. As bold as lions. As bold as lions. You're listening to the As Bold as Lions podcast. Well, it's another episode of the As Bold as Lions podcast, and hope you've been able to stay with me on these weeks. Um, this is week three of this series that we're in. But it all kind of builds on each other a little bit. Um, if I didn't mention this in the podcast, I think I did on my blog, and there's some overlap between the two. I, I try to kind of use a lot of the same script from the blog to do the podcast. So if you're reading that and listening to this, you, you're going to sense that there's a lot of similarities. But um, what I tried to say is that we'll go a few different directions through this topic of the blessed hope, but... Um, it all kind of is under this umbrella of being um, watchful and waiting for, for Christ's return. So the, um, the topic this week is sharing our faith in light of eternity. And I think as we, we talk about Jesus' return, we, we've spent some time just kind of going into that, even on a very overview level, to say what, is, what does the Bible say about that? Then we kind of look at our own lives and say, how am I living and how am I trying to be ready for that? And that was a lot with the parable of the 10 virgins. Um, and that was last time. And this time, just the extension of that. Well, how do I tell others about Jesus? And, and I know he's returning, you know, how do I share my faith in the light of that? Because that's something that seems pretty daunting at times, but is definitely important. And I don't want people to miss out, um, especially friends and family. So uh, that's where we're kind of headed today. But um, before we go down that whole path, I want to read from this verse in Titus, which is kind of the theme verse for, for this whole series. And this is Titus 2, 11 through 14. It says, For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works. So today, as I said, I want to extend that topic a bit further beyond uh, just our own readiness to the discussion of others around us. And one thing I do um, on a Facebook page fairly regularly, I try to do this every week and kind of as we start the week out on Mondays, I like to post, how can I pray for you? And it's interesting because um, without fail, every week there's always a, a request in there in the comments from someone that says, please pray for this person or that person. Sometimes like uh, pray for my daughters to become saved or pray for this person, my family to become saved or you know, um, a parent or whatever. And it, it just reminds me that we all have people like that in our lives who are like, I, I really want this person to come to know the Lord. Um, I don't want them to, to spend a eternity apart from, from him. And as we talked about last week, there's this parable that Jesus pretty clearly says, you know, some are going to be, um, able to enter in and, and sit down with the bridegroom and they were ready and there's others who will be shut out and, and they get that final word from, from the bridegroom. And we know that's Jesus, that final word that says, depart from me. I never knew you. And for anybody that says, well, the Bible is pretty unclear about, you know, kind of this universalist idea and is really, you know, how can God send anybody to hell and how can anybody, um, yeah, he's a good, he's a good God. He wouldn't do that to anybody. And everybody's eventually going to get to heaven and all that kind of uh, theology. I kind of call that, uh, 
Rob Bell slash Oprah theology. Um, I don't know where you find that in the Bible when you read a passage like the, the parable of the 10 virgins. I don't know how you pull that out then after, you know, you have to kind of get your scissors out and just start cutting things out of the Bible because it doesn't fit up with, fit in with this idea. You know, so all that to say, we have these people in our lives who are like, we know they don't know Jesus or, or maybe they did. And now they're just messed up and they're just totally walking a different path. And it, it hurts our hearts. You know, it hurts our hearts because we know there, there's this prospect that they may not be in heaven if they don't come to this reality at some point. So this isn't an easy subject at all. Um, but as I thought about it, I just started to kind of think of questions that I would have and perhaps have had or used in the past in conversations with people. Um, definitely things that I, I know I've shared on the blog to some extent in the past with different topics that um, I've gone into. I did a series um, probably a year a year and a half or so ago, and it was called The Jesus Dare. Basically, it was about three blogs that were tied into this book um, about Jesus and about salvation and the gospel message and um, laying out some things in conjunction with that. It's It's been a topic I've touched on a little bit, not necessarily tied into this idea of the blessed hope, but anyway, that's a, a little bit of a uh, time uh, subject for another time. But as I looked at this topic uh, today that we're, we're diving into, just these questions came to mind. I just started to kind of type them in and 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 fill in the the space on my my keyboard, you know, my um, word document that I'm working in, and just like going to come back and kind of fill in answers as I go along as I share this. And it's um, it's a little bit different format for the blog that I do. It's a little bit different format for the podcast that uh, that we do. But I hope it helps. I think in sharing our faith, there's um, you know, there's ways to do it so that we're not just beating people over the head with the Bible. I know sometimes we want to, we'd like to do that, you know, but there's a way to kind of lead them to answers that um, we kind of just nudge them into the the proper, you know, um, pr- perspective on things and, and just to help them find those answers a little bit on their own with, with our help there. Um, we We give them permission to answer questions that, that help guide the discussion. And, um, you know, what, what follows here today are, are, are those questions. And, and I think it's a, appropriate, you know, anywhere in this dialogue to, to insert the gospel, to just talk about Jesus. And, and if that's, you know, a point at which somebody says, Hey, I want to follow Christ. That's, that's great. We get that opportunity to, to perhaps lead them to, to follow Christ. So um, I hope that this makes sense as we go through, and I hope it's something that you can follow. Um, I'm, I mean it to be very practical. I mean it to be very something, uh, very much something you can just grab onto and say, you know, that helps me, or maybe not that so much. But you can kind of pick and choose and, and use these in your own conversations, in in your own dialogues with people, especially you know friends and family for sure, maybe coworkers neighbors, maybe just strangers, just random um, chance encounters that you have with somebody. Maybe it's a, a, a waitress at a, a restaurant or something like that. And you have the opportunity to just kind of um, get this discussion going. So this first question, as we just kind of switch gears here and, and dive right in, this question is one where, um, for, for myself anyway, I feel like is a good starting point. It's just to to admit, you know, life is short and we're not promised tomorrow. So what happens when we die? Matthew 25, 46 says, And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. So a couple typical responses to this question, you know, what happens when we die? Obviously, some people will just say, I don't know, you know. Maybe you haven't given it a lot of thought, or um, or other people just say, "Hey, we go to heaven." Maybe they've maybe they've read a lot of Rob Bell or uh, are a big Oprah fan, but they just are like, "Hey, everybody goes to heaven. We go to heaven. That's where we go." Um, and uh, you know, a lot of people do not think about it a lot further than that because really, our 
our culture doesn't obsess a ton about the afterlife. It does somewhat, but you know, let's be real. They don't necessarily talk about the afterlife and the fact that, um, from a biblical standpoint, anyway, it's, it's kind of this picturesque, uh, if you want to believe in heaven, that's where you'll go. Um, you know, the, maybe the real party is down in hell and that's where you'll end up because that's, that's better or whatever, you know, just these really unrealistic, um, kind of ideas and attitudes towards heaven and hell and what's, what awaits us when we die. Um, because they're not grounded in anything. They're not biblical for, for sure. So obviously death is kind of a a reality, right? That's this kind of the understatement of the podcast here. But I think we can find some common ground with non-believers when we simply address the tenuous state of this world. You know, just simply considering what what have we all lived through in the past few months? Well, a worldwide pandemic that had fallout affecting everyone and and every aspect of life. And I think that alone is enough to kind of start the conversation here and, and be real with people. You know, so if you died, where would you go? And how do you know? Is heaven open to everyone? And if not, who decides who's let in and, and who's left out? And something I might suggest here, if, if they're open to it, the, the thing we just talked about, the parable of the ten virgins, that's a great lead-in. It might be a little heavy depending on who you're talking to, but that's certainly kind of this, you know, there's people that will be let into heaven, there's people that won't be, and it might be just a, a place to kind of take the conversation. If it's a little too early, maybe you come back to it. But another question you can ask is, when you consider this world, are you optimistic about things? And why or why not? James 4, 14 says, Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. And it's, this is kind of an interesting question, just talking about optimism. I, I see polls from time to time and, and just um, studies or or whatever where people are asked about just how positive they feel about life or how they feel about the future. And very often it's, it's kind of a, there may be a little bit of optimism, cautious optimism, um, but probably more often just not super optimistic about where things are headed in this world, where the state of the nation, if you're in the U S or the economy or, or whatever, you know, and people just not, not really feeling it, if I could be honest. So, you know, and a lot of times I don't know if they can put a, a finger on it exactly why, you know, yeah, the economy or this thing or that thing, but it's just definitely this feeling like, you know, things aren't really right with the world. And it's probably been since COVID, but probably even before then. Um, and I think even non believers can kind of sense that to some degree. And those who maybe aren't spiritual in a, in a Christian sense can just have that feeling from time to time, you know, uh, this is a totally unrelated, somewhat unrelated, some related, but uh, I mean, just look at the, the use of um, antidepressants and um, anti-anxiety meds. And just, I can attest to this as being somebody in the medical profession that the, the use of these things has just skyrocketed um, in the, in the past few years, uh, definitely since I've been, um, in pharmacy, which is, is my, uh, my, um, original profession. And I can just say, you know, prescriptions for that stuff is just, we're, we, we pump that out more than heart meds and diabetes sometimes because people are, are anxious. People are depressed. People are worried. And so there's a lot that it seems like we despair about. And somehow into that, I think there's, there's a connection again, where we can just say, you know, God created this world and our relationship with him to be in perfect harmony. And sin came in and messed that up. Sin came in and separated us from him and what he had an intent, he had intended. So our fellowship with the creator is broken. And really until Christ returns, we, we are going to live in this fallen world that we're going to live in this fallen state and things are not going to look the way they're supposed to. 
And I think there's some common ground there where we can kind of point to that and say, that's a lot of the reason why things are messed up, you know? And really, a lack of optimism is its a real thing. Even as Christians, I think we, we realize this, this world is, is going to pass away. This is going to fade away. I don't want to get too set in things here because this isn't my home. This isn't my ultimate destination. So let's not get too comfortable. Another question that we can ask is, do you believe Jesus is the Son of God? Now, from John eleven twenty seven, it says, She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. So, at this point, this is kind of a big question. And again, my, my thought process here and my way of kind of leading person through a conversation, it, it may be a little bit different than yours. And this is kind of like dropping the bomb in the middle of the thing because this is a turning point when we get to this point where we're talking about Jesus and he's absolutely a stumbling block for some people. Um, Even some people can, they can believe God, they can believe that Jesus existed, but they have kind of this difficulty articulating exactly who Jesus was or who he is. Some of those people, they, they can admit that, well, he was a good teacher, um, nice person, things like that. But to really establish Jesus as God's son and say he was fully human yet fully divine, well, that's a really big step for some people. And once we get to that point, once we can say, yeah, I think he was the son of God, well, then there's some pretty big implications for that. There's there's really a, a response that is necessary on our parts. You know, if Jesus is really the Son of God, what does that mean for me? Well, he, he said he's the only way to the Father, and that's from John 14, 6. That's a pretty big statement. Um, if he was crucified and, and the tomb is empty, what does that say about his power over death? You know, why why did he have to go to the cross? So, you know, on this point alone and on this question in our kind of flow of thought here, um, this is where a lot of other questions can kind of start opening up. And this is where a believer in Christ, you and I, we can kind of help lead a person to process these things. And it might not be a one-time discussion. It might not be a one-time thing because... You know, it may be a series of them unpacking things and having more questions and uh, unraveling a little bit more and having some more questions and and just a a kind of a a series where we keep coming back to some things and and helping them process and unpack. Uh, You know, I think even as I accepted Christ as a as really a child and as a young man, um, there have been just a lot of revelations since then. And for some person, um, an adult, to to get kind of that reality and to kind of start taking it all in, it can, it can be kind of like trying to take a drink from a fire hose, if I can use that analogy. Like you're getting so much, and sometimes you just have to step back and allow things to process and, and keep coming back to things. And, you know, as a believer, it may be some things that just seem kind of rudimentary to you seem like very basic, but you have to know how to bring it down to that basic level and kind of uh, stay with a person at that, wherever they're at to process things. Um, If you start getting in over your head, then there's resources out there and there's people that you can talk to to help you help this person in your conversation. But there's definitely the ability within all of us to preach and share the gospel. Another question, and as we kind of start finishing up here, I've got a couple more, um, but Jesus, you know, had a lot to say about his return. He had a lot to say about the end times. And even some of those things we, we seems like we're facing right now, or we're, we're starting to, you know, if Jesus is really real, can you trust him? Mark 13, 26, it says, At that time, people will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. So going even a little further here, and I'm sorry that I keep kind of hammering away on this, but we can kind of continue this idea of, um, quote, things Jesus said about X, Y, and Z, end quote. Things Jesus said about whatever topic. And, you know, here we, we kind of 
open up scripture and we can take people to places like Matthew 25 or Mark 13 or John, uh, like chapters 14 or 15, kind of things towards the end of John, where Jesus is he's talking a lot about things concerning the last days. And if we can go back and say, well, Jesus is a son of God, he's reliable, he's true, um, you know, and all those things, then then we have to look at the rest of his teachings as an extension of that. We have to then say, well, he said these things about his return. He said these things about what would happen. And we have to say, as we look at the world in the light of scripture, we, we can see things lining up with that. And even if we can't definitively say, well, we're in the last days, this is our end times, we know that we're starting to see things that look somewhat about what Jesus was describing. And um, if you go back to the, the first podcast in this series, you know, the big question, when will Jesus come back? We, we talked about that a little bit. We talked about wars and rumors and, of wars and famines and false Christs. Those are all things that, that Jesus talked about. And, you know, we can lead a person to, to some of that in scripture if it's, if it's helpful in this discussion. Um, but with, with having an open door and an open ear here, we have the opportunity to speak into lies with the gospel with kind of the backdrop of all these things that are going on. And, you know, it can be a real moment to say with, with everything that's wrong with this world, why would you not trust Jesus? I think that's just kind of a, a light bulb moment. The, the light bulb goes off for some people when they, when they realize that, you know, a final question and um, this is this is kind of the the clincher. And again, the, the, how you get to here and, and what it looks like is going to be different for everybody. But um, I just put it this way: What holds you back from trusting Jesus today? What holds you back from trusting Jesus today? Romans ten nine says, "Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved." Some just very convincing, clear words there about Jesus. Um, it's interesting because even putting all the facts out there and kind of putting it all on the table in front of somebody, there's the possibility that they're still going to walk away in, in disbelief. And we have to be okay. You and I have to be okay with the idea that some are going to reject this message that we bring. And, the, you know, I think there's a couple things that we have to remember in that, that we are not the Holy Spirit. We do not save people. Okay, we kind of present the information, we try to answer questions, we try to present truth, but we're not the ones doing the saving. And when and if they reject it, it's not them rejecting us, it's ultimately them rejecting Jesus, it's ultimately them rejecting the Lord. So a couple things that we have to keep in mind with this whole thing. And, you know, we, we cannot take things personal um, even in the midst of some very hard conversations and sometimes with some people that we, we care deeply about, you know, we, we, we grieve that a little bit, but we've got to leave it to the Lord. We've got to leave it at his feet. We have to say, you know, God, I'm, I'm desperate for this person to, to come to know you, but I, I can't be the one that, that makes it happen. You have to, you have to allow it. Um, but this final question really, it, it does make a person, if they've been presented with all this information, it makes them kind of lay their cards out on the table and, and um, you know, say, now that you know the truth, what, what's keeping you from, from saying yes to Jesus? Um, you know, for some, the, the evidence is going to be too overwhelming and they're going to say, yeah, I want to get saved right now and, and praise God for that. That's great. Um, you know, others might be just kind of open to the idea. They're, they're, this, they still have some questions. They still have some wrestling. Um, those are people that that you just got to keep praying for. They're they're close. They're 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 kind of at this point of like I want to, but I, I've I've got to you know whatever it is that that's holding back. They they, they need to just kind of pray through that, or you help them as well and and, and pray. Um, and then there's others, like we said, they're, they're going to come up with an excuse or they're just going to kind of flat out reject and say, it's not, it's not for me. I don't, I don't think I'm going to do that. And, you know, we, we often, I think for those people, there, there may be 
something in their history. There may be something with the church that that's just burned them or whatever. Um, it may be some kind of scientific explanation that they have that's like, I'm, you know, I can't get beyond this or whatever, or some philosophical th- reason why accepting Jesus just is not something they they can do. And, and you know, that's fine. That's, that's their decision. That's their choice. You can, um, depending on who you're talking to, there's, there's resources out there. There's, there's scholarly folks like a CS Lewis that struggled with all that, but still came to the the conclusion that, that Jesus is either a, a liar, a lunatic or Lord. And, um, you know, there's, there's ways to kind of help people through that process, but, you have to know that in their heart, a seed has been planted and you might not be the one that leads them to the Lord, but someone else down the line, they might be the one who gets that opportunity. And, and it's it's just a call to us to say, I'm never going to stop praying. Um, I hope this is helpful again, as we kind of wrap this up. Uh, I believe in this series that we needed a week where we just kind of addressed sharing our faith been a while since I've kind of gone through that in general. Um, and again, this may not be exactly how you would go about doing it. I, I can totally say, just take this or leave it or use what helps and, and don't use what, what's maybe confusing or, or not helpful. But hopefully, you know, as you're having discussions, it's leading people to, to do further digging and, it's just the reminder for ourselves that we have to be, we have to be prayed up. We have to be read up in God's word. And then we just have to go out with confidence and boldness because ultimately it's the Holy Spirit working through us. We can put a lot of pressure on ourselves and um, kind of think it's, it's up to us whether or not somebody says yes or no to Christ, but it's not. Um, but we just have to be prepared. We have to be ready. So. You know, I want to leave you with a story that kind of ties back into all of this. Um, and it's one I, I debated about sharing. I put it in the blog and and I, I want to talk about it here on the podcast too. I, I, I regret that I have to share it in some ways, um, but I want to share it because I think it's it's it ties in and, and it helps. Um, you know, I can remember over a year ago, the, the place where I work, I said, I'm I'm in pharmacy, so uh, I work for a big, big box uh, store, and just locking up um, that on a particular day uh, at the end of a shift. And um, because it's um, this this big store that I work in, I had to find a manager to to get me some keys and uh, to be able to close up and, and lock up for the for the day. And uh, this was actually you know over over a year or so ago, and kind of right at the beginning of all this COVID, I guess, madness, hysteria, whatever you want to call it. Um, this kind of the, the absolute panic uh, of things kind of starting to set in and, and just seeing that in people and, you know, just being very concerned about touching things and um, sanitizing everything and, and just kind of the, the height because there's just so many unknowns about about this virus, you know. And I'll never forget having to just go find a, a young manager um, who could get the keys for me, help me lock up, um, and, uh, and so I could get out of there. But uh, just a, a, a kind of a jaw-dropping statement that he made to me because we're both kind of talking about some of this this stuff and and uh, getting um, you know just the reality of. of of things setting in the, the dire situation that we thought we had before us. And he just said something that just, it always sticks with me. He said, well, I guess if it's my time to go, it's my time to go. And, you know, Grant, we know a lot more now about COVID coronavirus, the probability of, of folks dying from it and, and all that kind of stuff. And I'm not trying to minimize anything, but Aside from, you know, that statement, I did little at the time to point this young man to Christ. And maybe I was swept up on some of the fear myself, you know, but I just kind of went away, just kind of nodding in agreement and leaving wide open this door of opportunity to just say something, you know, really anything about Christ. And I regret that missed opportunity 
And I realize now that I got to be better prepared for the future. You know, we have this ability to point any hopeless situation to the reality that Jesus is coming back. And we can take much hope in that. This story, I, I just share it because that that phrase, you know, if it's my time to go, it's my time to go. I had no idea if this person had any relationship with the Lord. I didn't go any further with it. I didn't even bounce anything else off of that that statement. And that's the reality of our world for a lot of people. They, they don't think a lot about the afterlife. They don't think about heaven or hell. They just kind of say, well, when I die, I die. And that's kind of it. And we have to realize that, you know, in the scope of eternity, this life is a blip. It's just barely anything. But eternity is forever, you know? We plan and we do so much for this life, but we we take little regard for what is to come and how much we should be ready for being with Jesus, you know? And I'm reminded of that when I see these conversations, when I hear about people that are just kind of nonchalant about whether living or dying or, or whatever, when it's really like, no, you you need to really figure this out because there's there's a destiny for all of us after this life. Like when we breathe our last, we go somewhere and you need to figure that out. I believe you go to heaven or hell. I believe the way you can know is by trusting in Jesus because he offers you the opportunity to have life with him. So guys, I hope that, um, again, this series is, is an encouragement for you. Pass these along if, if they've been a blessing and we're going to wrap up with one more podcast in this series, The Blessed Hope, where we turn our eyes to heaven. And I'm excited about that. Even as I'm recording this, I haven't written that one yet, and I haven't um, kind of uh, figured out what how that's going to look from a, a standpoint of the blog and of the podcast. But I've, I've got some ideas, and it's certainly things that just tie us into what the Bible is saying about the reality of heaven and what it's going to be like. What are we... What's going to happen there? So excited to share that one with you. I hope you'll come back. And as always, let's finish with Ephesians 5, 15 through 17. It says, Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Guys, that's a reminder to me, just as I shared, let's make the most of every opportunity we can't live our lives in regret if we've missed some opportunities. You know, God gives much grace. And so I'm reminded of that. And I'm thankful for that. And he will continue to give us opportunities because he wants to use us. He wants to use you. He wants to use me. God bless. Hey, guys, this is Derek Charles Johnson. You have been listening to the As Bold as Lions podcast. I am a blogger, a songwriter, an artist. And if you've been encouraged by this podcast, please go ahead and subscribe and share and head over to DerekCharlesJohnson.com for more encouraging content. God bless.